What's going on, everyone? I'm just a simple American man here to react for your entertainment and also to learn something, to learn yet another thing about the UK. Today I'm reacting to 11 weird facts about the House of Commons. I've learned a fair bit about the House of Commons and how it works, who's in it, the MPs, uh, that it's one of the branches of UK Parliament. And uh, I actually watched some some of the crazy stuff that happens in the uh, House of Commons actually on another video. So I, I don't know exactly what kind of weird facts we're looking at here, but uh, if they are weird facts for UK citizens, then they're going to be extra weird for me. There's no way I'm going to have heard of any of this, I imagine. But, you know, let's find out. There are statues all throughout Parliament, but some get more love than others. A number of MPs like to touch their favourite statues for luck, yeah? I mean, it makes sense that there's statues if it's a historical building. Look at these two statues. I don't even know if he was really talking about these two here, but... I mean, I don't want to just make fun of the statues, you know? I'm sure the U.S. has statues just like this. They just happen to be, especially this guy on the left, he's in a very, that's an interesting pose, I guess. And he seems very, I don't know what expression this is. Like, I don't know. And maybe this is one of the, uh, one of the statues that the narrator's talking about that they like to touch for luck. That's not even that weird. That honestly just makes sense. Like... It's a historical place. You're going to have statues of historical people. If you happen to idolize one, look up to one, or whatever reason, really. No need to knock on superstition or stuff that you think will give you luck. So, no. Seems kind of cool, actually. Yes, people in charge of our countries do believe in robbing statues for luck. The favorite statues seem to be Winston Churchill <laughs> and Margaret Thatcher's. MPs like... I mean, I actually think that makes sense. Plenty of people, plenty of people on this earth do stranger things than rubbing statues for good luck. So politicians are going to be superstitious as well, I imagine. Luck. The favorite statues seem to be Winston Churchill and Margaret Thatcher's. MPs okay. like touching Churchill's feet so much that they wore down the statues and were ordered to stop. It's said that many MPs have ignored the instructions and continue to give Churchill a cheeky little rub. Pol <laughs> okay. A cheeky little rub. Why do they have to? Why do they have to phrase it like that? I guess because they're not supposed to be doing it. They're not supposed to be doing it like anyone really cares. They're probably just like, guys, can we stop rubbing Churchill's feet, please? And then they just do it anyway, and no one really cares. But uh, no, I mean, a lot of politicians must have rubbed the feet for it to start wearing away the statue. Parliament was ahead of the rest of the UK in banning and continue to give Churchill a cheeky little rub. Parliament was ahead of the rest of the UK in banning smoking way back in the 17th century. When smoking was banned, okay. a snuff box was introduced so the MPs could sniff their tobacco instead. The box is still in the chamber's entrance for- Snuff box. Snuff. What is snuff? Snuff box. Snuff box. Snuff box. Used for... Cut it a mixture of ground tobacco? Do you s snort it? Wait, what? I have not heard of this. Hold on. I mean, something kind of rings a bell. I mean, it sounds like drugs, though. Putting it in your nose. Can you snort tobacco? I've not heard of this. They've ignored these instructions in banning smoking way back in the 17th century. When smoking was banned, a snuff box was introduced so the MPs could sniff their tobacco instead. The box is still in the chamber's okay. entrance, full of snuff today. The good news is that MPs <laughs> are massively into vaping these days, so no one uses it. Wait, is that, <laughs> is that serious? They're into vaping? That's funny. That's funny. It's not just the kids, and I mean, every adult I know, like, <laughs> I mean, so many adults I know are into vaping, kids are into vaping. Why wouldn't the MPs be into vaping as well, you know? Everyone's doing it, and uh, it's much more convenient than smoking, I imagine. I wonder if they're allowed to vape inside a parliament, inside the House of Commons. I'd imagine not, right? That's kind of the whole idea of banning smoking. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe it just smells like bubblegum. Cotton candy flavored vape everywhere. But, uh, 
the snuff box. That's the snuff today. The good news is that M sniffed their tobacco instead. The box is still in the chamber's entrance, full of- Okay, so it's like a historical snuff box. I didn't- I, Am I correct on this snuff stuff? I honestly, maybe I've not been around the right people, but I know of chewing tobacco, tobacco you put in your gums, and you have to spit out all the time, obviously you can smoke it, but I wasn't really aware people snorted it. Like cocaine. Okay. <laughs> there are purple ribbons in the- Because the MPs are massively into vaping these days, so no one uses it. There are purple ribbons in the members' cloakrooms, which are designed to allow okay. MPs to hang their swords alongside their coats. There ah. are apparently only a few plastic swords hanging from the hooks these days, though the BBC did re From back in the day, when uh, people actually had swords and brought them to Parliament in case uh, shit went down, if, uh, as you can say. <laughs> I, uh, I learned in the other video that they designed the distance that the two parties or whoever, the two um, sections in the House of Commons, uh, they're spaced apart a very particular distance that's two sword lengths so that they can't immediately get into a sword fight and strike each other in the House of Commons. So uh, this actually makes a lot of sense. There are purple ribbons in the members' cloakrooms, which are designed to allow MPs to hang their swords alongside their coats. Gotta hang your there sword somewhere. There are apparently only a few plastic swords hanging from the hooks these days, though the BBC did report that at least one MP still takes advantage of the sword hooks. Every morning the house is- in What? Someone brings in a sword? Just f for ha-has? For lols? Or for intimidation? I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd be in favor of all of the above. In session, but at least one MP still takes advantage of the sword hooks. Every morning the house is in session, a mace is brought into the house. If this mace isn't in place, any debate which takes place is illegal. This mace! I was wondering about this mace! I watched MPs behaving badly in my last video, and one of them snatched this mace! He grabbed it! and was walking out with it. And they stopped him and put, everyone was kind of booing him. No one seemed to like it. And I was like, what is this thing? It's some sort of ceremonial relic or something? And yes, yes it is. Wow, I was lucky that this video explained that to me. I would have kind of, I would have forgot about that. But uh, if, the, if this mace is not in place, then uh, the session is not legal? Out into the house. If this mace isn't in place, any debate which takes place is illegal. In fact, to try and stop a debate in 2009, yeah. John McDonald picked up the mace and yeah. took it to his seat. It didn't go oh. exactly to plan, as he ended up being suspended. No, this is different. I saw another one where he, he picked it up and was <laughs> he was walking out like he was going to bring it home to decorate his house with it. But uh, they stopped him, and he he uh, let them. He, he gave it up. He let them take it from him, and they put it back. But I didn't... I had no idea it had any legal ramifications. If that thing is not in its proper place, the debates are not technically legal, which is kind of a big deal. Bended from the chamber. All parliamentary debates are typed up and then printed into bound books. This means that the parliament produces 80 million printed pages every year which oh, is equivalent to wow. about a thousand trees. The yeah. Green Party said in 2010 they were happy not to have too many MPs in Parliament as it meant they contributed less to this tree massacre. Okay, I'm sorry, that's a complete lie. Ignore that one. They do still what? print a lot of books though. Wait, what? Why the... Why are we... Why are we making jokes about uh, recycling and saving trees? I don't even get what the joke is. That sounded kind of plausible to me. <laughs> okay. There are strict rules about what MPs can... That was a little weird. That's a complete lie. Ignore that one. They do still print a lot of books, though. There are strict rules about what okay. MPs can and can't say in the House. They aren't allowed to- Really? Because from what I've seen, uh, and I've only seen, you know, the most extreme moments. Moments that aren't typical. I have to admit that. But I've seen some MPs say some stuff. Get passionate. Get down. And uh, they'll say stuff, and they'll be asked to retract it, or th or they'll be kicked out. But uh, so it's interesting to see that, and it makes sense. Le legally, they're not really supposed to say certain things. A lot of books, though. There are strict rules about what MPs can and can't say in the House. 
they aren't allowed to use any words which might offend the dignity of the house. That <laughs> means no matter how angry they get, they can't call another MP a f- But there's one unexpected thing which MPs what? absolutely cannot say. In- but I have heard them. I've seen the I've seen the tapes. I've seen the video, the footage. I've seen it. They do. I mean, I guess I've never seen them outright curse at each other. But they've said some pretty disrespectful things and outright told each other sort of what they think of each other. But uh, I guess maintain the dignity maintain the dignity of the House of Commons to a certain extent is kind of what we're saying. That's that's the rules for what you can say. Another MP, a f- But there's one unexpected thing which MPs absolutely cannot say in the house. What? Check out our video which goes into depth about this. The link's in the description. There's oh, a come on. bag hanging on the back of the speaker's- Are you kidding me, bro? Come on. depth about this, which MPs absolutely cannot say in the house. Check out our video which goes into depth- There's one thing they absolutely cannot say. Hmm, I don't know. I don't even want to speculate on what on what that is. I would assume they can't threaten like somebody with physical harm, although that's kind of a regular law, <laughs> not, not just a law inside the House of Commons. So I don't know. I might have to check that out. He might have got me with the clickbait. We'll see. Depth about this. The link's in the description. There's a green velvet bag hanging on the back of the speaker's chair, which is where MPs can place their petitions. I know what you're oh. thinking, why are you telling me about this boring old bag? But it is slightly more than just a tassy bag. This is okay. where the expression of having something in the bag originates from. Still not that R- interesting, but I think we can all agree I did pull that fact back. In an un- Is that true? Bag originates from. Still Is that true? That's a saying that Americans use all the time. Constantly. Is, does it originate from the UK? House of Commons? Can that be? Having something in the bag? That's in the bag. Means it's a sure thing. Gonna happen. Surefire thing. That's really interesting, if that's true. If that's, if it's based on this bag on the back of the speaker's chair. Nobody knows that. That would be like the million dollar question on who wants to be a millionaire or something. Uh, all right, glad I know that. Still not that interesting, but I think we can all agree I did pull that fact back. In an unusual architectural move, the chamber was built without enough seats for every MP to sit down. MPs yeah. have specific areas where they can and can't sit, but most don't have designated seats. Okay. If you're interested in finding out who sits where in the house, we have another video about that, which you can find in the description of this video. Man, this guy does a good job <laughs> um, promoting his other videos. Like, you gotta watch him to, to learn some of the, this stuff. He really reels you in with that. But, uh, yeah, I had noticed that earlier. There's 650 MPs, but I think there's only room for 400-something individuals to sit. I don't know why that is. And it definitely makes the room feel more chaotic, is a word. You know, everyone's kind of crushed in there. Very close quarters in a place where temperament is already gets high and debates are held. It's interesting. It like almost f- facilitates that, promotes that kind of feeling. It's definitely, it's definitely a vibe. It's a feeling that this this uh, House of Com- Commons creates uh, for sure. There are two red lines running down the middle of the chamber. No MP is allowed to step between these two lines during a debate. It's said okay. that they're designed to be just over two sword lengths apart. Ah, I knew this any one. sword fighting. I knew At this, this point, one. it's beginning to seem like the whole building was designed around medieval weaponry. Yes, <laughs> he's not wrong. It does seem like that. And uh, I do like that rule, actually. I don't, I mean, I, you'd like to think we live in a time where we're all cordial enough that no one is going to physically intimidate each other, but it's nice to just have the rule. You know, you can't get in each other's face. We have to keep a certain level of respect, so they can't cross the lines when they're debating. Makes sense. There's a hairdresser in the House of Commons to help the MPs get a fresh trim without even having to leave the building. Really? And they say that millennials are lazy. Apparently, women's cuts <laughs> are about 50 pounds, which for its central London location, they seems have to pay? reasonable. Green is the cut. They have a, they have a, a hair cutter, a barber, in the House of Commons, but the the MPs still have to pay for it. 
I mean, I guess that's kind of respectable, but, you know, of all the perks that politicians get for free, uh, that wouldn't have made me that upset, knowing that they get free haircuts. I would have been okay with that one, with that perk. Could have lived with that. Although I'm sure they get a million more, much better perks. Colour used to represent the House of Commons as she central London location seems pretty reasonable. Green is the colour used to represent the House of Commons as should be pretty obvious by this point. Yeah. The benches have been coloured green for over 300 years, so if you haven't noticed yet, you're a little behind the programme. <laughs> okay. Slightly more interestingly though, Westminster Bridge is also painted in a matching green. For more okay. news and politics information, subscribe to TLDR. Westminster Bridge? Also painted in a matching green. Program. Slightly more interestingly though, Westminster Bridge is also painted in a matching green. Westminster Bridge? Westminster Bridge? I'm not familiar with this. Also painted green? What's the significance of this? I mean, it looks awesome. And it's right there on the same street as Big Ben, is this correct? Is this, is this picture up to date? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. That's cool. Um, is this bridge related to Parliament somehow? I'm not sure what the, the connection was. I'm not even sure what the significance of that bridge is. But at some point along the line, I'm definitely going to watch a video about that bridge now that I know it is significant. I'm sure there's a ton of... Uh, UK landmarks that I would have a great time looking at, to be honest. Gives me some ideas. Anyway, that was pretty interesting. That was uh, definitely a bunch of facts I did not know, except for the one about swords. Because that, that, that one stuck in my mind. If there's a fact about sword fighting and death, it's going to stick in my mind. But uh, I enjoyed that. It seems like a lot of these interesting facts are really rooted in the long, deep history of the House of Commons. A lot of them are like steeped in its tradition, and there were a couple things there about how things haven't changed for hundreds of years since the place was built. So, yeah, it's all pretty interesting. I enjoyed that. So, if you enjoyed this video, <laughs> how's that for a segue? If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give it a like, uh, give it a comment, or subscribe for more videos like this, looking at different UK things, reacting to them. Feel free to subscribe for more stuff like this, and until then, thanks for watching, and see you later.